Greetings, writers. Today we are going to talk about commas. Commas can be troublesome. Commas are confusing. But commas are also common. Uh, as it says in our first little bullet point here, the comma has more uses than any other punctuation mark. Uses that can often seem complex. So we're going to go through some guidelines today on when you use commas and when you don't use commas. So in part one, we're going to focus pretty much on when you do use commas and when it's appropriate and how when you do use them, how you use them. So we're going to use some examples here. We'll cite some rules and generally kind of go through some examples that apply the rules so that when you encounter this uh, use of a comma, you'll understand, at least you'll have heard, how to use commas correctly. And the bottom line for me in all of this, uh, in any rule of grammar, punctuation, or usage, is to look it up when you're not sure. And many times you think you're sure, but you're not sure. So it always pays to look it up. And the bottom line for all of this is that when you make mistakes in any of these areas in your writing, you distract the reader. So we don't want to do that. We want the reader to focus on what we're trying to say. So in this case, we're going to learn how to use commas correctly. So our first rule is use a comma and a coordinating conjunction to join two independent clauses. Now we had a lecture in one of these series of lectures on uh, run-on sentences and found that we can join two independent clauses uh, in a way that makes it a sentence and in ways that do not make it a sentence. When it's not done properly, it's a run-on sentence. And so we can join two independent clauses, which, as you recall, are sentences that stand alone, if we use a comma and a coordinating conjunction. So here's the example. Fiona's car broke down. She had to walk two miles to the train station. There are two sentences. Now we would uh, make this two independent clauses in a single sentences in a single sentence if we did this. If we said Fiona's car broke down, she had to walk two miles to the train station. Uh, that runs together. It's a run-on sentence. Now, if we put a comma after the word down, many people find that sufficient. Uh, some uh, student writers, particularly, will often just join the comma or add the comma and join the two clauses and stop there, but that does not make it a correct sentence. It's still a run-on sentence until we add the coordinating conjunction. In this case, we're going to add the word so. So using the comma and the coordinating conjunction makes those two independent clauses into a good, strong, single sentence. Fiona's car broke down, comma, so she had to walk two miles to the train station. Okay, our next rule. Use a comma after an introductory word group. Okay, what's an introductory word group? It's a group that, uh, of words, obviously, that we use to kind of get into our sentence. So in this case, we have an introductory word group uh, attached to a sentence here, and it is, after college, I plan to join the Marines. The central thought in that sentence is, I plan to join the Marines. The introductory words are after college, and in this case, we haven't joined them by a comma. So when we do that, it makes it correct. Without it, it is incorrect. It just flows together, and it gets confusing, and it makes the reader stop to try to figure out how to interpret that sentence. So we've clarified it considerably by adding this comma. Okay, next rule. Put commas around non-restrictive, non-essential elements. So non-restrictive elements are elements that are not essential to the sentence for it to be a sentence. We talked in another lecture about restrictive uh, or essential elements in a sentence. Okay, in a non-restrictive uh, element of a sentence uh, that appears in a sentence, we need to have commas. So Cicero, comma, ancient Rome's orator and lawyer, was a self-made man. It's non-restrictive, the uh, part in blue, because it isn't necessary for that to be a correct sentence. So we have to set it off by commas, as we have here. Cicero, ancient Rome's orator and lawyer, comma, was a self-made man. Now, if we take that non-restrictive, non-essential element out of there, you can see in the next sentence here, it just says Cicero was a self-made man. Not as much information to be sure in that sentence, but it is a sentence. It still becomes a sentence without that particular uh, information in there. So when we have that in there, 
it uh, would be a sentence with, without that information. We need to set it off by commas. Non-restrictive elements in a sentence. Okay, next rule. Use commas to separate items in a series. We all know this, but how do we do it? Okay, here's an example of a sentence that we can apply this rule in. American highways were once ruled by powerful muscle cars such as Mustangs, comma, GTOs, comma, and Camaros. That's correct, and that makes the sentence perfectly clear. Now, here's a note, and here's where the crux of the problem with series commas comes in. Some writers believe that the comma between the last two items is optional, and that, uh, indeed, is the way many people write. And it isn't deemed incorrect in many instances, but most experts now, today, advise using them because when you don't use all three, or uh, not all three, but when you don't use uh, all the commas you could use in a series, your omission can result in a misunderstanding or a misreading of the sentence. And here's just two examples that make that perfectly clear. My uncle willed me all of his property, comma, houses, comma, and boats. Very clear sentence. We know that my uncle willed me his property, his houses, and his boats. But what happens if we take out that last second serial comma here, and read the sentence. My uncle willed me all of his property, houses, and boats. We could read that as three separate things that were left, property, houses, and boats, or we could read houses and boats as an indication of what comprised his property. So you see how it can be confusing. Add the comma back in, and we have a very clear sentence. We know exactly what we're trying to say. Here's another example in this next sentence that perhaps illustrates it even better. The activities included touring the White House, comma, visiting the Air and Space Museum, should be a capital on that, Space Museum. I'm just going to do that here so we have a correct sentence. Okay, the Air and Space Museum, comma, attending a lecture about the Founding Fathers, comma, and kayaking on the Potomac River. Very clear sentence that tells us what the activities included when uh, we visited Washington, D.C., presumably. Okay, so that is fine, and it's very clear, but if we take out this last serial comma, which some writers believe you can do, some experts, if we say that, uh, if we say for the moment that that's optional, let's say we didn't put it in. Okay, the sentence reads, activities included touring the White House, visiting the Air and Space Museum, attending a lecture about the Founding Fathers, and kayaking, kayaking on the Potomac River. Still seems fairly clear, but we could read that as a lecture about the Founding Fathers and kayaking on the Potomac River being the end of the sentence. So if we're not clear with our commas, uh, the reader has to stop and say, are we talking about the father, Founding Fathers and kayaking? I had no idea they had kayaks that they were uh, fooling around with back during the founding years of our, our nation. So it can be almost amusing, uh, but certainly confusing if you, uh, if you don't read it correctly. Chances are we do, but just to be sure, we add that last serial comma, and we have a sentence that is clear and says what we mean. Okay, these are some examples about how to use commas, when to use commas, and when you use them, uh, how to apply the rules, and to be as clear as you can possibly be with commas.